Hello, I'm Sak Sagawara from University of Tokyo. In this work, we propose an evaluation methodology of living comprehension task. First, I introduce a formulation of how she task. A task consists of context and question and its answer. This is an example from MC test 2013. The context is that princess climbed out the window of the high tower and climbed down the south wall when her mother was sleeping. She wandered out a good way. Finally, she went into the forest, blah, blah, blah. And que the question is, where did the princess wander to after escaping? The answer is B, forest. To answer this question, the reader must understand coreference resolution. C in C2 and C3 mean the princess, and the reader must use common sense knowledge. In the question, escaping means climbed out and climbed down in C1. And understanding temporal relation is also needed. The princess first escaped and next wandered out to the forest. So we can see that this question requires multiple skills to answer. So as shown in the previous example, our task is used for testing comprehensive understanding of natural language text. Recently, many data sets are proposed, particularly as far as we know from the last year to now, eight or more data sets are pre presented. The size of data sets has been getting bigger and bigger. And now we have more than 6 million questions in total. So many questions are invented. We often evaluate systems relying only on simple accuracy. By using accuracy like this table, we cannot tell what systems understand and what they don't. In addition, Chen last year showed data sets may contain unanswerable or ambiguous questions. So we need better we need better metrics for evaluation, which enable us to analyze data sets and systems deeply. So our research question is how we can evaluate and analyze our systems for the robust improvement. In this study, we propose two classes of metrics, prerequisite skills and readability. Next, we explain our motivation. These are examples quoted from different RC data sets. The first example is taken from Squad 2016, which consists of Wikipedia articles. The second example is the same as the introduction, which take from MC test. So this is crowdsources, crowdsource analysis. First example is written for adults, so it is it seems difficult to read. And second example is written for children, so it seems easy to read. In the first question, the context had two sentences, but because most words of the question statement appear in the second context sentence, as shown in underlined parts, this question seems easy to solve simply by looking at one context sentence and selecting an entity. On the other hand, we, as we explained the introduction, the second question requires multiple skills, multiple sent requires reading multiple sentences using several skills. Yes. In other words, the first question seems difficult to read but easy to answer, and the second question seems easy to read but difficult to answer. From this observation, we are interested in the relation of two types of difficulties, that is difficulty in reading and difficulty in understanding. In this study, our goal is to establish a general methodology to assess the quality of data sets and the performance of systems. 
Our methodology consists of the following four steps. First, we define a set of basic skills, basic skills required to answer questions and text readability metrics. Next, we annotate our questions with the defined skills. After that, calculate readability measures for context sentences, which are necessary for answering, and select it in the annotation. Finally, we analyze in terms of analyze the data set in terms of two types of difficulties. So we want to extend an evaluation scheme like this table to something like this table. Our, our evaluation methodology enables us to analyze system using these metrics. So these are our definition of predicted skills. We adapt a set of skills in the previous study as a basis and make an extension of knowledge reasoning. This previous study analyzed MC test data sets and three systems and showed an um, observation that the more skills are required in question, the more difficult to answer. Based on this observation in this work, we assume that the number of skills required to answer a question is an indication of the difficulty answering, difficulty of answering. We annotated six, these six data sets with the defined skills. We select them in order that they include several types of chance, query sourcing methods, and task, form, and task formulations. We asked annotators to select sentences that are needed to answer the question and decide if each skill is required. These sentences are used to calculate readability measures. So this is the result of skill annotation. Each value presents frequency of each skill in multiple level annotations. For example, this row shows the coherence resolution is required to answer a question in 32% of QA for MRE, 49% of MC test, and so on. Because MC test includes narrative stories, coherence resolution is required more. Other data sets mostly consist of expository articles, so coherence resolution is relatively not required in questions. Results, results can also show the difference among data sets in terms of knowledge reasoning, here especially bridging and elaboration. For example, QA for MRE whose questions are written by NLP experts has the highest scores in knowledge reasoning. So this seems to reflect the fact that QA for MRE has technical documents that contain a wide range of knowledge. We also annotated nonsense questions, which are ambiguous or unanswerable ones. Results show the quality of questions. For example, who did what questions are automatically generated and they contain ambiguous questions. Next, this table shows required numbers of skills for each data set. For simplicity, we focus on average number of required skills. These values mean each question in, for example, QA for MLE required 3.25 skills on average, etc. And several data sets require less than two skills on average. For the second class of metrics, we adapt readability measures proposed in the previous study. Context sentences selected in, selected in the annotation are used for calculation. In the result, squad and QFOMRE achieved the highest squads in the me most metrics. In contrast, MC test, second column, had the lowest scores. 
and for simplification, we use, use these fresh Kincaid grades, F bar K levels in the comparison among data sets. This clause represents the number of years required to understand text. So our main interest is the correlation between readability and prerequisite skills. To investigate this, we examined the relation between readability metrics represented by the fresh Kincaid grade level and the number of required prerequisite skills as shown in this figure. So you can see QFO MRE was relatively difficult in reading and answering and squad was difficult to read but easy to answer. We can observe that there is not necessarily a strong correlation between the two values. So we conclude that there is only a weak correlation between readability metrics and number of required skills. This leads the following two insights. First, the readability of RC datasets doesn't directly affect the difficulty of their questions and vice versa. Second, it is possible to create questions from easy, sorry, create difficult questions from easy to read context. So here we would try to mention how to utilize this observation. One possible scenario for developing systems is that it is first to be able to solve an easy to read and easy to answer data sets. And as a next step, improve the system so that it can solve an easy to read and difficult to read data sets or difficulty, difficult to read and difficult to answer data sets. And finally, the system should be applied to difficult to read and difficult to answer data sets. In the last part, we raised some issues. First, in the annotation, in the annotation, we recognize that our methodology cannot evaluate the difference between truly difficult or nonsense or no answer among incorrect answers, even in human performance. So if we want to automatically generate questions from large corpus, well, we have to pay attention to this issue. Next, we should emphasize that our methodology cannot deal with the competence of selecting evidences from context. When we consider RC as textual entertainment, first readers gather the premises from context and next make hypotheses using question statement and answer candidate, and finally test whether premises and their hypotheses. In these steps, our methodology can deal with only the, sorry, only the first step that is testing if premises enter hypothesis. And we think we may have to focus on text down of data sets. And another issue is that how RC systems can contribute to other fields in which natural language understanding is needed. We believe RC reading comprehension can lay a foundation of NLU tasks that have some sort of context. For example, dialogue systems history can be seen as context, as part of utterance, as can be seen as question. So if RC tasks are handled with general formulations, they will be able to contribute to other NLP field. This is summary, thank you. Um, so, uh, you've come up with ways of evaluating the different data sets, uh, and on the basis of your uh, evaluation, you've got very different results in terms of the relative difficulty. How do they correlate with the results that systems are actually getting over these data sets? So, systems and... So, you have results for squads, say, or for 
CNN Daily Mail, which wasn't in your table, but um, does, is there a strong correlation between your predicted uh, complexity of the task and the results that systems are getting over the different data sets? So, they will ask more pages. Wow, sorry. So, uh, is it the case that when you say it's a hard data set, systems do badly? Yes. And when you say it's an easy data set, systems do well? Yes. Or not? And if not, why not? Ah, uh, yes. Hmm. So, for example, as explained in the limitation of our methodology, living comprehension includes some steps. Mm -hmm. First, the first is collecting evidences from context, and and next generates hypothesis and testing them. Mm -hmm. So, we can only evaluate between. Sorry, we can only evaluate testing process. So, yeah. for the for systems, mm, the first step is important. Mm -hmm. So we cannot evaluate yet. Mm. So. And I think the, the, it depends on task formulation, for example, multiple choice questions or closed test or text span selection. Right. But I, 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 th there's no reason there has to be correlation. I guess where I was going with that was some of the um, component measures that you were making, so for bridging or, or whatever else, perhaps they are much, much harder for systems. Yes. So uh, data sets which have higher levels of those actually uh, make it much harder for systems to solve them. Um, so you know, were there any insights you could gain into the relative tractability or how well NLP was tracking relative to some of these subtasks you'd identified over the data set? Yes. Mm. One method is to reorganize the data set mm -hmm. according to skill numbers or metrics. Mm -hmm. So, and first we test easy to answer data set. Mm -hmm. And next, three skills required questions, test the thing, three skills required questions or yeah. much harder questions. Mm. But I, I think it is difficult to mm. do. Yeah, I, mean, I, I can see this being very valuable to the system developers if, if they get a breakdown across the different questions and your annotations of what is difficult about the question to understand what they're doing well and not, for example. So one more quick question. In which case, let's uh, thank our speaker.